Um, got it. Okay. Um, I remember not to touch my face moving forward. <laughs> So everybody, this is Sasha Lecca. He is a photo editor at Rolling Stone. Um, he's been there a long time. Before that, he was a photo editor at Newsweek. And um, in addition to being a great photo editor, Sasha is an amazing photographer. Um, he shoots a lot of uh, bands, both you know, punk bands and shitty clubs, all the way up to Madison Square Garden. He can cover both ends of the extreme which is uh, a real talent for, for shooting music. Um, he does a lot of great street photography, skateboard photography, just all around great photographer. Um, so we are super excited to have you, Sasha. Um, better run. Thank you. That I will was say, really nice. <laughs> for a quick caveat. Um, um, since little Richard died, um, Sasha's time has been completely occupied with coverage of that. Um, so it's kind of, you know, you might think a magazine like Rolling Stone doesn't necessarily have breaking news to cover necessarily, but with celebrities, musicians like Little Richard dying, it totally upends Sasha's life. Yeah, he's he's definitely one of the um, the guys that sort of sort of would stop the presses. Uh, unfortunately, um, we just closed the next issue uh, two day, a day before, two days, before. Um, and I think. We couldn't go back in the pages. Um, and um, otherwise, it would be a shoe in for, you know, a big feature in, the, in that issue. Um, so what happened was uh, we actually broke the news. We, I, a colleague of mine in, in specifically, um, and we've had, we had like a lot of page views, more than we have in a long, long time. So um, it's always, nice to get there first, but we also want to be correct and proper and respectful. And, um, and so there's, they post a lot of stories and, uh, my colleagues and I in the photo department, we all gather on Saturday and, um, and, um, uh, just did a big deep dive image research session, um, which ended up going into mother's day. Um, I did not see my mom yesterday. Um, uh, but I'll see her this weekend. So there's some big plans for something before the next issue comes out, I hope. A little Richard related. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, but what I was gonna, I mean, I can just jump right in. I was gonna tr let you guys know that also I've been, um, I've been at the magazine for almost 13 years now. And um, for, you know, that's, it sounds like a long time, but that's, I still feel like a new guy there. It's like, there's a lot of people there that have been, um, been there longer. I, I worked for a very long time under a photo director who was there 20 plus years. Um, and, uh, and so she's no longer working there. Um, I worked with a, another deputy who was there for more than a decade as well. And she's no longer there. So now I'm, I, I'm the, the person in the photo department who's been there longest. So I kind of hold the biggest uh, or the sort of longest institutional knowledge of, of who shot what, when, when did this run, that kind of thing. And so um, I also have all the, 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 the drives since we've all been sort of relegated to working from home. I like the last thing I had to do was kind of grab like these, bags of DVDs and CDs with all the like old images on them just to uh, make sure they were available during this time. <clears throat> and I was gonna share my screen to, t to show you a couple of things. Um, and again, this was gonna meant to be a little bit more organized, but, but essentially if I am showing you the right uh, are you seeing the same thing you saw before, Mark? Uh, the All American Killer. Um, yeah. Okay. So large, and then the thumbnails on the side. <clears throat> yes, and I'm sorry for this kind of gruesome image, uh, but that sort of wanted to get it out of the way that it's that Rolling Stone is not just um, a celebrity and music um, magazine. It's also uh, covers serious topics, long form journalism, uh, anything that is large in the culture. Um, 
will hit. And I think that confuses sometimes a lot of people. And that's generally why I came to the magazine in the first place, because of my experience at, at Newsweek. Um, and they wanted someone who's going to ramp up their coverage of stories like this one or like the kill team. And this is the, this goes back a few years and we were one of the magazines along with Drew Spiegel who broke this story um, where we each publication got uh, a hold of a set of images taken by this squad of soldiers who were killing innocent civilians for sport. Um, it's one of my more interesting weeks um, where I had to sort of very, very much clandestinely go out of town and follow directions and turn around this corner and jump on this train and take a cab to this other place and end up picking up a USB and try and verify on the spot what was on it. Um, there's a lot more stories about this, but uh, I'll keep going. Um, uh, Charles Manson, it's a photo that he, you can't go in, you can't get it, you, well, before he died, you can't get into, um, uh, to photograph him, but uh, there, the guard there has a digital camera and takes pictures of him whenever he wants, uh, whenever he wanted, and uh, usually it's to send to his girlfriend, but in this case, it was to send to me, and this, this is very specifically was sent to um, to me, which was quite interesting to open up my email uh, that good. day. Um, we do a lot of war coverage as well. Um, I'm actually working on something else that just hit my inbox for the next issue um, about uh, bombing campaigns. Um, we also do a lot of historical stories still, coverage of the roots of rock and roll, um, uh, of course, we just talked about Little Richard. Um, and generally, my role in this is to sort of know who has what images and to seek them out and to have relationships with some very, um, some, some wonderful and aging photographers um, and, uh, you know, um, and this, was, this is one of my favorites by Elliot Landy. Um, I point out to, to my class and everybody else really like what a particular skill set that is because a lot of times photo editors will just search Getty or AP or you know wires for old images to see because Getty basically has bought up everything but a lot of these old rock and roll photos the, the photographers have hung on to it so it really takes a bit of historical knowledge to know who took what and that's what that's was um, that was something I had to learn on the job <clears throat> it was not something I had much experience with uh, working uh, with music at all. And um, when I got to the magazine, we had a photo department that was, um, if you count, you know, interns and assistants, it was about eight people strong. And um, now there's uh, basically just three of us. And one of them is exclusively working online. Uh, another does sort of splits his time online and print. And then I'm on the print side. Um, and so, you could you could do pretty well searching just Getty and and uh, a few other places, but there's a number of really special there's a lot of really special work out there that's not even going to come up in a Google search. Um, I um, this is by Bob Gruen. Bob Gruen is um, is someone you have to I mean he's quite well known, but it, it, if you if you didn't know who he was, then you'd be missing out on a lot of amazing imagery. Um, including this, um, kind of jumping ahead to some portraiture that, um, for the most part I've assigned or been part of, um, the production of, um, this is the Arctic Monkeys by Danny Clinched. Um, the next few images are by, by Danny, who's one of my favorite photographers just in general, but I'm a very prolific music photographer. Um, he did this as well has a great relationship with Bruce. Uh, he also shot this. Um, one of the first uh, assignments of recent years was um, when I asked him to go to Ohio and shoot the Black Keys. This is before they became a sort of stadium band and, um, and just spend the day um, 
<laughs> which then, and that's, this is the opener that ran basically from this image. And um, I, I think a good note to make at this point is just to, uh, you know, when you, when you do a lot of um, editorial work, it's not, you don't, um, you don't really, uh, you're not getting rich off that stuff. And, uh, but it does present a good sometimes vehicle to show your, show your work uh, for a potential, you know, commercial gigs or, other, or additional editorial work. And I, I know that they were excited to work with him for this. And he has since then worked uh, on their own publicity work, you know, um, down the line. So that ended up, I think, being quite good for everyone. Um, it's, built, it's one of my favorite shoots of recent years and uh, by James Minchin of Bill Withers, who just passed away. Um, we, James also shot uh, Laura Jane Grace, who um, a couple years before this, she'd come out as a trans woman. Um, and we were doing a follow-up feature and she had, was a couple years in sort of taking some hormones and um, this sort of setup was not planned in advance. Um, but, you know, she, when James and she got together, um, she ended up trusting him and he makes really beautiful work and this was the result. Um, a truly great shoot. Yeah. Um, similarly, this is much more recent, Eric Tanner, um, I, one of my favorite photographers now, um, shot Lizzo for us in the first feature for the magazine uh, and a lot of the references we discussed in advance were, you know, kind of classic paintings. Um, uh, and, but, you know, and this kind of happened on the day. It wasn't brought up in, in advance. And um, just, um, and then uh, the following year, which is uh, just recently, uh, earlier this year, we, she made it on the cover and it's um, a, a, a shoot by David LaChapelle. Uh, which actually I thought there was more here, but I'll, I think it's probably just dis disorganized, but um, yeah, there's more here. Something like that. Uh, I'll jump, jump back to that in a minute. Um, Eric also shot uh, Matt from KG Elephant, also with some references to old paintings. Um, uh, the mix is a, an internal section of the magazine that uh, where we do a lot of shorter stories, but it has its own kind of front cover page what's really great kind of feature for for original photography mm -hmm. uh, shot Tira Wack with David Byrne for us uh, which was the greatest day of my life because <laughs> I love um, David Byrne and uh, this is for a feature on uh, musicians hanging out with other musicians um, he agreed to, he actually he we asked him directly like who he'd want to hang out with and he said Tira Wack um, which I'm Quite impressed. Uh, uh, she immediately said yes, but I think didn't immediately know who he was. But um, <laughs> this is the image that ran. Uh, jumping ahead, this is what the original Lizzo layout looked like. And then this is the David LaChapelle shoot. Um, David LaChapelle has a long history with the magazine, but uh, hadn't done anything for, uh, for the mag in a few years. And uh, it was just sort of when we knew we were doing Lizzo on the cover, it just felt like she was kind of perfect to match him up, uh, to match her up with him. And he was, he was so psyched. And so these were the results of this insane photo shoot. Natasha, how much directing do you do on something like this or in any of them? I would like you to know that I knew you were going to ask me this right at this moment. Um, and when it comes to someone like Dave LaChapelle, it's, um, you kind of just, um, you kind of let him loose. You know, you do get a sense of some things beforehand, but you know, he's gonna have a lot of these ideas on the spot and things set up. And um, I wasn't there for this, my, um, the photo director was, um, and I was not on set for this either, but no one from our office was. And so it was just sort of just communicating a lot of, you know, I, 
for me, I kind of was, tr- or was trusting them both. You know, we kind of had agreed to a certain vibe beforehand. Um, mm-hmm. All I really needed was something that was going to fit this, this particular layout, you yeah. know? Um, and, um, but another example is we, um, I don't know if you know Jack Davison, work you know the name i've never met him yet. yeah i mean the work his work he's his work's pretty extraordinary he's out of london and we had this really rare opportunity it was kind of last minute to photograph um greta thunberg this is on a very busy tour and so um we had like 10 minutes like behind a bagel shop or something you know in um in like oxford or some something so um and so I knew, like, there was literally no direction. Like, I kind of just wanted him to do what he would do if he had 10 minutes with her. Okay. Um, and the whole shoot's just really stunning. Um, a couple of, there's another example there. So, um, I mean, that's generally the, the kind of the point why we would call someone like him or like David LaChapelle or like in this case, Campbell Addy is for, them to do the work they've been doing. Um, and that's because that's what you're what you're recognizing in them. And so it's not so much there's a lot, you know, there's not so much direct there might be some direction there. Obviously we need to see them, you know, mm-hmm. uh, see them well. So there might be some requirements, <clears throat> for instance, like this opening image here. If she was dead center in the gutter, that's that's the problem. So I mean it's 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 little things like that. It's um, you know, composition. And something um, like David LaChapelle would kind of be aware of. I mean, it's it wasn't even brought up. It's like he he knew. It's and also with with him too. It's like you're kind of getting the set of images. You don't you're not you're not going through the whole set with him. You're getting a handful, and like they're all amazing. Yeah. Um. I I love also images that are, appear to be sort of loose off moments mm-hmm. with a celebrity. This we, we this would only work when we had the chance to run a second photo in this case, just because you want to see them well. And, and right. so we need to do that. Um, just another example of some more of the newsy, newsy side of things. Um, you know, musicians still are bread and butter and we have a, a spread called opening act, which opens most of the issues. Um, and in this case, we try and get behind the scenes or more of a personal vibe, mm-hmm. uh, not a performance. Um, we rarely, rarely assign performance. That something you might want to ask me about later. But the, uh, mm-hmm. uh, but it's really more about the, the sort of the life behind that, the, the, all that you know, backstage, um, at home, in a rehearsal space, you know, that kind of thing. Right. Uh, like Bruce That's backstage of his, at his Broadway show. Um, or Casey Musgraves backstage with a couple of drag queens. Um, actually, um, Devin, uh, I think that's probably his shoulder in the photo there on the right. Um, <laughs> he was shooting this exact moment for the New York Times. <laughs> um, De- uh, speaking of Devin, he shot the Who for us, um, yeah. which you know it was kind of it was one of these things which it was it was kind of always going to be a sort of thankless uh, job. You're not going you don't get much time. I don't think they enjoy each other's company um, that much, um, and so we just need someone who's going to try and make as striking an image as possible. Um, my favorite images are images that did not run because they are less traditional images of them. Um, I don't have them handy. I can maybe dig them up to show you. But uh, here's another example of just uh, musicians hanging out together for a series that we've, we've been doing. Um, again, this sort of lighter kind of hangout kind of vibe. It's not heavily produced. There's no lights. Um, I don't think there's even an assistant. There's no stylus. Uh, just them showing up and creating this moment. Same here. Lenny Kravitz and her. Um, I'm not sure if this is, you can see this quite well on your screen, but this is sort of the rare opportunity we can um, 
have a photographer follow a band around for a few days um, on the road. Uh, it's not something we had been able to do for a while, um, mainly for budget reasons, but also there's no plate. We didn't really have a, an appetite for those kinds of images in the magazine. Um, mm -hmm. Toward the, we, uh, just to qualify that, quantify that remark, um, the magazine got sold at the uh, a few years ago and um, recently and redesigned a, a couple years ago. So now it's it's quite a substantial page count, and so we have all these places now for photography. That and so a lot more signing is happening. Um, so there are photo, you know, there's straight up photo essays, but there's also like these visual hits like this of a band and on the road. As long as we get some lot you know personal moments and behind the scenes moments then you know that's when we get some good live as well um, mm -hmm. um <clears throat> let's see billy eilish uh last early last year can we send a photographer to your house yes a few months later <laughs> she's on the cover <laughs> um <laughs> so it's kind of like a weird it usually doesn't happen that fast, um, but this is all within the year. Um, these cover shoot was by Petra Collins. Um, again, oh. Billy is such a, a such a, an attractive subject to sort of dangle in front of photographers that we might not always get a chance to work with, um, like Petra, and she did a, an amazing job. So this is uh, Brockhampton. Is again another uh, opportunity for just a big photo with just a little bit of text, which I I, I must admit I really love doing. Yeah, I'm jealous. Same with this. It's an Instagram famous parrot that we called at the last minute. <laughs> um, you know, ten minute shoot with Willie Nelson. This uh, James Minchin who shot this. You shot the Laura Jane Grace photos from before. And um, and this was one of my favorite pictures from uh, last year is, is running um, running this, which took a lot of convincing to our editors who felt like, you know, we, might, we, had, we had to see his face like this, but we already saw it and everyone knows what he looks like. Right. And this is kind of amazing. <laughs> Oops, I messed that up already. Where are we? Right there. All right. So, um, yeah, this was another highlight for me personally, just to be able to go to, that's great. Yeah. Um, to go to John Lewis's office, um, uh, with Wayne. Um, and it was great cause, um, uh, I'm glad I went cause I, I mean, Wayne is amazing and, and, uh, but you know, we were also nervous with like, this is like the most excited I've been meeting like a, a, a famous person, if you will. <laughs> And we were just sitting there shaking, you know, and uh, I just sort of had to be there to like get everyone talking just so they can be, you know, kind of loose. Mm -hmm. um, How often do you go on shoots? If it's local, um, pretty often. Um, it's rare if it's out of town, unless it's, you know, if it's a cover shoot that I'm specifically working on. Mm -hmm. um, it's encouraged more now than it, it was before. With, um, and part of it, part of that was for the last few years before the sale, we were putting out a very small issue, a uh, very thin issue. And, um, and for a, like a long period of time, there wasn't that many people in the office. So for me to run off somewhere, was really difficult. Um, if you don't mind me asking, um, what how, what would you say is the average length of a, of a shoot? I know it might be kind of vary depending on the subject, but what would it you really, recall? It really does vary. I know that we negotiate. Uh, it really depends. Like I we're shooting a band, a uh, pretty famous band for one of those mixed leads uh, this coming week. And I was surprised to, to get an email saying like, do you think two hours will be enough? And I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, but sometimes it's, uh, you know, John Lewis was, was pretty quick cause he's a busy guy and, uh, yeah. you know, uh, bad bunny was quick cause he came late and that plane had to take off. And, uh, 
Uh, but the, uh, you know, Troy Savan was, uh, I think, I forget, was was going to be an hour, but he was enjoying himself and it was ended up being two hours. And sometimes you sort of kind of hope for that happens, you know, where they get comfortable with the photographer. Gotcha. Um, if it's a cover, um, Chris, it's, uh, we, we kind of want them all day. You know, it's like, I know that like Willie Nelson was like 10 minutes, but that's because it's Willie. But um, uh, Jordan Peele is, is a cover shoot I got to go to, uh, for, for example. Um, and just because in part, he actually didn't have as much time either, but it was uh, Frank Ockenfels who shot this, but, and, and just we had the whole day of setting up four or five different things that we just pounded out, you know. Um, this being one of them. <clears throat> and uh, this is when that uh, that movie came out, not Get Out, but uh, someone help me. What was the next one? Thank you, by the way. Huh? I said thank you, by the way. Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I, uh, we, we rented uh, some, some bunnies and they ended up being the, the same bunnies that were in his film. Um, it's not that interesting a story, actually. Um, <laughs> But um, this is uh, Travis Scott. It was done by Dana Scruggs, who at the, we realized at the time was the first, um, I think first person of color to shoot a cover of Rolling Stone, which is, was kind of shocking and embarrassing for us to, to realize that after a 51, two year history. Um, to the point where I went through the covers book uh, and just sort of made sure. And I th think there was a photo by Dennis Morris who that ran on the cover, but I don't think it was assigned. So it, technically, yes, first personal color issue. Um, and so the idea of having a more diverse set of photographers to go to is um, also something that we've been radically changing over the last few years. Um, Dana also shot Stacey Abrams for us, which is a fantastic shoot. Mm -hmm. um, Christian Felber shot Phony People. Is he, he is, Christian is not um, black, but um, I just love this photo. I didn't mean to have that bring, bring the, this, that subject into, into this photo, but um, uh, this is another cover shoot that I was at um, where a, a number of ideas Stephen will bring and you kind of uh we talk about a lot of things in advance but um but then he's so creative that you that he's going to bring some kind of fun energy to uh even in a pretty simple situation like that one um this is the first cover of um the new redesign the new issue um and uh, I forgot who shot it. Oh, Reuven Afanador, that's right. Uh, my boss was at this one, um, but it's still, you know, it's like we're, we, we don't have like the hugest budgets. So, you know, this car is like, we knew a guy who had, knew a guy who had this kind of car and uh, you know, can you be there this time? You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Kind of make things happen um, as needed. Um, Uh, I threw these in because um, you would have just heard from Devin uh, on Friday. Yep. And this was, I think, one of the first things he did for us, uh, which is a story on uh, trans teenagers um, that are homeless. And it was a really challenging um, work to do. And um, essentially, because they weren't always obviously able to be found in the same places that we um that the writer found them yeah. and so it was a lot of Devin had to sort of run around and like you know a couple of them had cell phones a couple of them didn't uh and you know kind of tr trying to track people down uh in certain spots um and i know his work's usually black and white i think i um I don't think it came up in this instance. Some some of the work he delivered black and white, some in color. Um, and I think we just were, ran ran them in color. I was just about to ask that. Yeah, he. I think he even posted on his Instagram when this came out. 
something in color and it made me feel a lot better because I, I, we get that question a lot. Like for instance, here's a whole picture essay story that's all in black and white. It was delivered that way. I could have gotten in color. Actually, it, he, it was sent both ways, but it, it, it's such a solemn and uh, topic that it just worked uh, really well. This is a photographer, uh, Sanjay Jar, mm -hmm. um, who, it's, it's been a long time since I sent someone specifically into a conflict zone. And so I wanted to be very careful about him having insurance and um, specifically where he was going to be. How can I reach his wife or girlfriend, uh, etc. So, um, but everything worked out great, and he produced some great work. That's great. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Brown, who's been covering um, Rohingya uh, refugees, uh, we kind of made an arrangement with him to go back and so it's this is this was a mix of some old work and some existing work uh as some new work and, and some existing work um that we i think were recognized for last year um this is a just a couple of images from a a longer picture gallery of the parkland uh, uh survivors and family members um, this is by Ben Rasmussen. Um, it's, it's sort of the rare occasion we could send a photographer from uh, from one city to another. Uh, often we'll use locals, but uh, especially for work like this, you know, um, I, I I'm not a big fan of Ben's, and I thought he would handle this. So uh, I don't want to even say better than someone who who is in in Florida, but because uh, there's some great people in Florida, but but. Um, but uh, that's always a kind of a question that photo editors have of who they're going to use and, and what, the, what, what the expectations are. Um, the magazine has a long relationship with Salgado as well. And, and um, for that first you know, redesigned issue, they decided to kind of late that they wanted a photo essay. And uh, just we reached out and, and asked if there was any new set of images that um, that he might have, and he's like, yeah. So, and that was uh, it was so it wasn't a, an assigned uh, set of images, but um, the next sort of chapter in his his own kind of work, and so we were able to run it. Um, this is a picture essay by Natalie Kisar. It was done on assignment for us, and after a lot of discussions on trying to make some images from this part of the world. Um, we decided uh, to concentrate on one um, one small barrio, one small neighborhood, and and how they're surviving, uh, rather than kind of look at the sort of greater news and uh, that going around the country, and sort of gives you a, little, a different point of view. Um, and she was able to go back and show these girls their picture in Rolling Stone, and they're very excited. <laughs> um, and so this is this is one of my, the favorite things that I got to do this year for sure she's great yeah this is an older cover i'm gonna skip ahead this is kind of i have a quick question for you from yeah. one of the students sasha yeah um do you usually send photographers based on their knowledge of the artists or would you send them based more on their aesthetic like how would you on on their aesthetic i oh but i mean there's also the personality question too sometimes you know it, uh, if you know someone you know, photographer A would get along great with subject B, and maybe that they'll that kind of relationship that could can result in some special images, some extra trust, some extra time. You know, uh, it's not as important. You know, this is Pari du this is Pari Dukovic shooting um, Jack White. I don't think there was much discussion about whether Pari was going to get along with him. You know, he. I, um, but sometimes that discussion can happen. Um, Dalai Lama by Mark Seliger. I, mm -hmm. I think the only real thing to say about this is that the Dalai Lama's people told us in advance that like, you can't set up any lights. You'll have five minutes or less. 
So don't, you can't have a lot of people. And Mark said, fine, but then spent the whole night with his crew with a, with a basic setup that they practiced taking down and putting up and taking down and putting up over and over again. So it became like a 30 second kind of setup and, mm -hmm. and it got set up so fast and he walked into the scene and if he was fine with it, then they weren't going to be able to say anything. And that's how this, this portrait happened, which is kind of amazing. That's um, so, I mean, that was kind of a, it was kind of ballsy, <laughs> um, but, but pretty, um, pretty effective in this case. I mean, the answer, the other, if it, if it, it could have worked out the other way where they said like, nah, you can't do that. And it would, I'm sure he still would have nailed it. But um, uh, I, I took this picture. <laughs> uh, this is again, the rare occasion where, which is becoming more and more common where um, I've kind of worked at this place for 13 years and I sort of avoided going to music festivals. And, um, and last year I went to four. So, uh, they're sending me out more to other things. And this was actually not even part of the music festival coverage, but this is a band, a Cage the Elephant, which I've been photographing for years. And so it's one of these things where like, we wanted to follow them around for a day for this kind of visual hit. You know, they had a, a new album coming out, a new tour, touring with Beck. Um, and so, you know, it's one of those things where if they, they say like, if I'm, if it's going to be me, then they're going to let me have that access because they've already they've kind of gone through it already with me they've already they know what i'm gonna do and same with the black keys i've i've got some very nice relationships with their 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 people and and um some some good trust developed since 2008. um how much does um a, a musician's people so to speak, um, drive who gets to do the shoot? Or I mean, like, can they, do they ever have veto power? No, there's often, you know, not in situations like this, you know, um, but they kind of want to know that it's going to be someone who's going to be, um, who's going to not get in the way, you right. know, um, stay out of sort of private, more private, kind of zones, uh, it's, it's, it's not a problem. And it's certainly if I wasn't available and if I told them so-and-so, my other choice is gonna show up, it'll be, it would have been fine. But, um, but it made it easier just to all right off the bat that like I'm flying in, right? you know, and yeah. then it would then, you know, it just was that much quicker. Um, for some reason I was able to do the same with Tina Turner on amazing when Broadway when when broad her broad the Broadway show on her life was was there where, um. Yeah, I don't know how that happened because that that and that's the most nervous I've been I think in like fifteen years. <laughs> um, as well with David Byrne um, at backstage at his Broadway show I was there was a couple of weeks there I was just going to Broadway. <laughs> um. This was a sh picture I took just on a personal night out and a couple of months later became relevant for a package on music scenes because Brooklyn was one of them. Sash, do you have anything? I do. How's this? <laughs> um, and th this was a, I was going to move into the, another folder of the, the work that I personally kind of endeavor to shoot. Um, Unless you have some other questions, um, yeah, before we break talk it up, about personal stuff. Anybody have questions for him about um, working at Rolling Stone? How to get seen? What the deal? We can is. do that later too, and yeah. in the in the midst of all the other stuff too. But like, definitely, if you have any, yeah. Anybody have any questions for Sasha right now? How do you prefer? Um, what's your preferred method? I, I mean, if any, obviously, being a photo editor, our editorial classes teach us that you know, photo editors and uh, creative directors, or I'm sorry, um, uh, art directors are the ones that usually hire photographers. So how, how do you like to get, um, I don't know. Art directors hire, uh, actually, yeah, I've never really worked anywhere where the art directors hired photographers. It's always been, I haven't worked at that many places, but um, uh -huh. 
but uh, in my experience, it's always been photo department hires the photographers, the art department um, um, might handle more of the illustrations that get a commission. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess my question is more so how, how do you find the photographers? How, how do photographers kind of get on your radar? Oh, well, I mean, we, uh, I get a lot of emails every day um, and uh, a lot of promos, which I'm not getting anymore because I'm not in the office. Um, but to be honest, I haven't, in, in many years, I've, it's, it's such a rare thing for me to have an, uh, you know, something that's sort of an email blast that's going out to every photo editor, you know, in the country from like constant contact mm -hmm. or anything like that. It's, I've, I've rarely gotten anything where I was like, oh, that's good. Oh, I'm going to hang on to that. And, um, um, but the, uh, so a lot of it is looking at other publications and being on Instagram and getting recommendations from Mark Merman, um, things like that. Other colleagues, you know, they bring up people, they've got other people on their radar and it just sort of becomes this public knowledge and, there's a desire to always see and work with someone different and new um, mm -hmm. as strong as it is to want to work with like your favorite photographer for the rest of their lives. You know, um, it's a little bit of both. And um, so photo editors are always looking. And I know that there's definitely been periods in my career where I've been so overwhelmed that it's, it's been very difficult to, to do that as much. And I know that a lot of the thing I'm trying to work on more, like literally right now is to respond to, to everyone who emails me, but it just, it sometimes is so difficult because it is literally hundreds sometimes every couple of days. Very and it's a lot of it is a pitch for an idea that's not very good or, um, or that's being maybe that their work's not the most appropriate to do and things like, you know, like that. And for me to sort of take a moment to, add a critique or a comment then it becomes a conversation <laughs> that I don't really have time for uh so I'm but I'm trying to get better at that but I definitely you know if someone sends me some good work um I hang on to it and sometimes it takes a long time uh uh to sort of develop a relationship with someone and watch their work grow um it's not work something that I have shown there but uh, I know some colleagues of mine have have had uh, assigned some really great local photographers that we've been hanging out with that shows for, for years and, you know, sort of watch their work develop. And um, now they're kind of regulars as well. So That's former great. interns who shoot now constantly for us. Um, There's a kind of a very related question to that is, and um, how often do new photographers show up in the magazine compared to kind of well-established people or your regular roster? <clears throat> that's changed a lot in since the redesign where we have all these spaces for work and which allows uh, you know for instance you know when we were you know much theater magazine it there was like there was the cover cover feature and maybe one huge feature uh in the magazine and so it wasn't a lot of chance to kind of try someone new because you you know but in the in the new configuration i have like spaces that are half page you know uh spots and uh it, it gives us a, a lot more opportunity or, or just even like a single page image that's that just uh with just a little bit of text like like someone let's see like well it doesn't matter but the um but it, it, we definitely have a lot more chance and also a lot more signing online which i i should uh it, i haven't pulled any of the kind of like the amazing work that's done by the online photo editor mm -hmm. um there's so much more signing going on there too that like it's it sometimes happens where you know he's bringing in a lot of new people to shoot online and then you know and we'll have a look and going like oh i want i want to use that person you know for my next big feature here, so um, it happens. It's a lot. It's a lot better now. Yeah, I have a quick. Can I? I'd like to piggyback off of Chris's question. And what's the best way for you to receive images in the email? What's like a really successful? I mean, I suppose we could send you twenty images or one or a huge email or what's like. What do you love to receive? Um, I, I think uh, what I what we've been kind of I've always been saying for years is to 
is to sort of target, first of all, target the people you want to work for individually um, rather than those those huge email chains. I think they're, it's a lot more effective to reach out to someone specifically and say, hey, that, that feature you did in last issue and so-and-so, it was really great. I'm shooting similar work in this, you know, and, and I would send, you know, you can send five or six images in a PDF and it's like, you know, not a, not a 20 meg PDF, but you know, something small, something that's not gonna kind of blow up their, their space. Um, and that's great. That gives you some, and also, you know, you're, I think in the subject line, you're the city where you live should, should be there <laughs> because sometimes that's what happens where I don't know a lot of people in, in Santa Fe. And, you know, if I search my email for Santa Fe, like the, the people who have mentioned where they're coming from, you know, where they live, it's going to come up right away. And, and I've kept those emails for a reason, you know. And you mentioned like in a PDF, you want it kind of in a narrative form as opposed to just, let's say, a random portrait sort of. Depends um, on what the work is. Um, you know, I, I think if it's portraits, it can be random. If it's a specific story, I'd certainly think about the way it was laid out and presented. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, I got another question here. Um, do you ever feel your creativity is constrained by fulfilling a specific assignment? Um, I'm not sure I know what that means, but, uh, um, but I'm going to take a stab at it. Um, if you're thinking about like, if there's some images in, in the resulting shoot that are just so bizarre and beautiful and cool, and it just, it, they, the magazine is, is a more of traditional magazine and will, will not run those pictures. Yeah. That happens all the time. <laughs> yeah. That's how I was going to reframe it into that kind of like, yeah running into kind of, you know, the photo director or the, the word site even having a say in terms of like the Willie Nelson photo, you know, we need to see his face versus. Yeah. It's usually along those lines. I mean, it's, uh, you know, the, the, if it's something that's, uh, I can't think of anything that's too crazy that we've ever gotten. Um, I mean, this, the, um, just cause his name came up already. Uh, Devin had done some, some work on a, sort of vampire cult. Um, Which he showed us that, yeah. Oh yeah, okay. So he was going back to, was going to New Orleans to do some more work and sort of pitched it to us. And so we agreed to sort of put him on assignment for that. And uh, unfortunately that hasn't run yet, but there's some truly, truly odd images in there. But since it's part of a, a gallery online, you know, we have the luxury of, including them if it was just a single image that was going to run in the magazine unfortunately even i would have to agree it would have to be something that was going to really be a little bit more clear and sort of move the story forward yeah you know? yeah um before we move on to your own stuff um i have a question that i've always kind of wondered or not wondered but i think is a good point of conversation is kind of what is um one of the biggest misconceptions about photography in rolling stone that you think when people pitch you stuff? Oh, the majority of the pitches I get are for live music. Uh, and um, it certainly has a place in the magazine, but it's rarely featured in a really big way, although I just showed you some. But the, uh, um, it's not, um, you know, it's usually relegated to a secondary image about a band. You know, it's um, what we're going to do is hopefully get that really intimate portrait. And so the other images inside the story are gonna be, yes, they play live shows, we're gonna show that. You know, um, if it's ex an extraordinary live image, that could run a little larger. Um, but it's rare for, <clears throat> you know, it's rare for a, a live image to sort of be the featured image. Now that the one of the girl I just showed you um, happened to be, a a feature which we'll do once a year on the best music scenes. So that's an exception, you know, there's always, um, or, you know, to do a little tour diary, there's going to be a handful, but uh, it's, we won't do a tour diary if no one's going to allow us to be behind the scenes, which has happened too. you know, we'll get that. I, uh, I don't want to, I don't call anyone out, but the, the last show I went to before coronavirus hit was Hall and Oates and, uh, which I was super excited about because I had, um, I had some really good access um, with um, 
Morrissey, which is very rare, mm -hmm. and uh, which was like the best day of my life, and um, uh, and totally happened out of nowhere. Um, I was I was literally almost walking out of the place, and then it happened. But um, uh, but the same per, uh, the same uh, PR company works with Hall and Oates, and they said, "Do you want to do the same thing with Hall and Oates?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I do. I want to hang out with Hall and Oates." <laughs> Um, but they did not want to have a photographer around all night. And so the sort of the uh, access kept becoming less and less and less and less. And I was like, look, I'm going to, sh I'll show up and I'll shoot, but it is not going to be a gallery. You know, it's not. And um, so we kind of compromised on that. But um, anyway, um, I totally forgot your question, but. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. Right. Um, one other question that popped up here is, um, how uh, COVID has restricted assignments or um, how you're getting photos. Yeah, I mean, if you want, I could jump, actually this is more to the point. Uh, it's been difficult. Uh, we had a few banked, you know, beforehand that it's become really useful. Um, there are some people who are like, yeah, come over, it's fine. And just make sure that people are wearing masks and gloves and staying six feet away. And so a lot of those shoots are happening. Uh, but for the most part, it's kind of shut down and there's no, there's no gigs. So there's no shows. So no one's releasing anything. So no one really wants to do press. It's like, it's like all compounded, but there is, um, there is, I'm just sort of looking for this here. We did do a big photo essay on COVID related. Um, we had 17 photographers uh, out shooting i'll show you really quick um let's see if this is working all right do you see that kid yep okay so this is really just a handful um but almost everyone who went out and, sh and shot in a particular city has an individual gallery on the website you can take a look so because in the magazine there's it's like 12 page photo essay from all these works some some people didn't get in some people got a couple of images some people got one this is out of San Francisco. Um, Casey Clifford. Yep. Shot. Okay. Yeah. Um, Maddie McGarvey. Um, She's great. Yeah. Uh, September Bottoms, who just joined the New York Times in Tulsa. Same thing. Um, this is by George Etheridge in New York. Same, same. So these days were, it was, these were all very specific situations where everyone was like just realized this was going to be terrifying and so we even changed our policy on how we had people go out we made sure that they had protective gear not that we could send them any but we could reimburse them for buying some uh take ubers if you're more careful uh, comfortable rent a car if you're more comfortable um uh, so these uh you know, and these were long days, so we kind of, you know, even paid somewhat like what you would, I guess you would call hazard pay. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I think it worked out really well. And it was kind of a really big, diverse group of people. Natalie again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mike Bellamy. So, yeah, so it but the thing is now we are, we're kind of stuck with like we've done this kind of thing future coverage of this is going to look fairly similar so we want to sort of change gears and kind of cover the next round of what's going to be important especially to the industry that we mostly cover um we featured a lot of closed venues in the same issue um but we just closed an issue with a section called music in crisis which was profiles of people that are losing work that kind of thing. So, yeah. trying to trying to kick, keep up with it. Yeah. Sorry, it's seven o'clock here, so uh, they're applauding. If the, oh yeah, yeah, first responders. So, um, yay! <laughs> and honking their horns. So sorry about the noise. But, That's okay. Um. So I, before. We can move on to the work that I've done. It's just like, it's a quick, it's, you know, it's just a quick run through, but if you want to 
if you have some other questions before for that. Anybody else have questions getting work? I, I have a question. Uh, is there a case you you use the like landscape the horizontal photo photo uh, for the cover cover page They're like cropping the photos or just only using the vertical photo for the cover page? I want to know that. Oh, uh, I th I think most of the images that are on the cover are shots very deliberately for that space. Um, and so they were shot vertically. Um, I'm sure, though, there must. There's, I'm sure there's a there's an occurrence where it's a cropped horizontal, depending on what. But I. But most of our covers are specifically shot for the cover, rather than like, oh, let's see what we got. And you know, uh, there's some news covers we might do with some researched work. Those are rarer these days. But that's the, the situations I'm thinking about that might be cropped. Yeah, the cover photo is very specific because you need to leave room on the top for the, the name of the magazine and usually room on the sides. And so people shooting the covers really have to take that space consideration into, into, into mm. mind making the pictures. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, let's see your, let's see your own work. All right, well, let's see if I'm doing this right again. Um, what do you see? <laughs> Your dog. Oh, that's it. Uh, yeah, I have a couple of dogs. That's a placeholder. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, photography has always been a part of my life, which is very generally speaking. Uh, and for me, it's, I've never actually wanted to be a working photographer. My parents are both working photographers. Um, I have worked with them uh, so, and assisted many others and done that. But for me, it's always been um, a personal outlet, um, which has always turned into something, you know, um, just very, you know, this is the kind of thing, like if I was just walking around, like I'm you know, obsessed with like contrast and shadows and smoke, uh, which would always thrill me later when a lot of music concerts I go to have a lot of smoke and then I'm totally psyched. <laughs> um, you know, so it's the kind of thing that I'll just jump for is, is moments like these or even this, um, why does he have two umbrellas when it's not even raining? I don't know. But the, uh, uh, but generally speaking, it's more uh, reportage that I'll do. Just being in the room somewhere. It's I don't do a lot of portraiture. I don't set things up. I just like to be a fly on the wall and I and take good photos, whether they're of my family or friends or my dogs or at a protest. Um, and so. Uh, when Occupy Wall Street hit, that was the first time, it was not the first time they, the magazine sent me out as a photographer, but that sort of took it more seriously where I had to be there quite a lot, you know, and join the protests and be sort of up, up front and stay up all night. Um, and it was actually kind of a really amazing time in New York where everyone who wanted to be a photographer, a photojournalist, came down as well. And so you saw a lot of people, a lot of people's work for the first time from the work that resulted from, from moments like, like these. Um, and um, so, um, and a lot of these ran in the, the magazine as well, you know, um, and it's sort of, it's, I sort of, I'm very comfortable, <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm not, it's a weird thing to say, but I'm not always comfortable speaking in front of groups or being in a lot of groups, but, but when I'm shooting, it's a different, different thing. I kind of feel inoculated from everything around me and, and sort of key in on kind of like different moments like this. Um, and then I get super jacked. And so there's not a lot of whole difference to me from the, to the, to finding a, 
a moment like this to one like this. Um, this is from a, just a personal show I went to, which uh, actually I think it's going to be in the um, American Photo book at the, end, at the end of the year, this one. Um, and also just because we've we had a great writer in the next issue writing about how he feels a loss for being at live shows. They needed a photo and now this is, this is, this is running. This is, um, so I, I end up going to a lot of, a lot of shows. How that started was a lot of people sending me live photos, um, that I didn't think were very good. And so when it came time for a moment to spend some time, uh, with band, um, the people I worked with suggested I would, that I would go. Um, and I ended up shooting for the first time in some pretty large, large spaces. And it, 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 I realized that I really hate shooting at the garden. And, you know, although I'll, I will do it, I would much rather be in, in smaller places. Um, this is the Morrissey thing I was talking about. Um, what happened there was he, you see the photo pit down below? Mm -hmm. He doesn't. He didn't want anyone in the photo pit, because um, he didn't want anyone up his nose, which I get. So the only spot they were going to give me was in the back of the venue. Um, then I said, "No, thing. Oh, hey, 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 what about? <laughs> what if you were on stage with him?" <laughs> and I was like, "What? Okay, so sure." Um, anyway, this is more Cage the Elephant. Um, Cage the Elephant, Cage the Elephant. This is much er years earlier, Cage the Elephant. Um, uh, the, the one and only time I've officially been on a multi-day tour with anyone was with them. They invited me specifically. Um, and I, you know, it's it was at a time when we weren't really doing these kind of photo hits in the magazine, and so I had to take like vacation time to do it. And uh, but I wanted that experience, and so came up with more intimate photos like like these. Um, and let me jump ahead because it's getting late. But the uh, um, wow, I. You promised them small clubs. I don't. I don't have any uh, until <laughs> later. <laughs> um, it's Florence. Uh, it's just an insane future concert in a very small club, actually. So, lots of phones. Mm. Um, How do you pick which shows to go shoot? I mean, I'm sure you could more or less have your pick of what to do. You think so, but it's uh, you know a lot of the smaller like the like the sort of mid-sized shows like like this one is uh, Idols, which is one of the great bands right now. Um, and I've been dealing with the publicist for years with other artists that they represent, and usually they kind of represent similar bands in terms of their sound or point of view, and uh, so they're often like if there's a really good. Like they also represent Fontaine's DC, which I've been shooting a long time, and um, or not that long. They came out last year, but the uh, uh, feels like a long time. But yeah, um, so yeah, it's uh, access to the shows are 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 those shows are less difficult, and mm -hmm. but it's also um, you know they want to get something in the magazine and or on on the magazines and Instagram or on the random notes page, and so often that's kind of my 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 side of the, the the equation is sort of pitching that kind of stuff in the office and mm -hmm. i feel uncomfortable taking up the space if, if the magazine's not necessarily going to do anything but mm -hmm. um this is uh when shack uh played Lollapalooza, brought out jesus um I literally just talked my way onto this right onto the his DJ booth, <laughs> um, like the whole day of just like not saying no <laughs> and uh, jumping into his golf cart, you know, when he was going to stage. I'm like, no, nah, I'm getting into, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with you guys. And that's how that works. <laughs> um, play by Cardi. Um, this Pussy Riot, who I spend a day with, um, 
and which was a, quite a surprise where a, a publicist called and said that, that Nadia in particular asked if I could come and take some pictures just documenting the, a music video they were doing. Um, also kind of awesome. That's Q-tip. And this is actually has nothing to do with Rolling Stone, but my sister is, is like a wildly well-known and accomplished video director. And uh, so she invited me to the set. And uh, so th this, this is the kind of situation I really enjoy too, where it's just sort of being in the room mm -hmm. while something like that's happening and mm -hmm. finding these moments, you know. Um, skipping ahead. Here's your small clubs <laughs> and more interesting shows. That's Sloppy Jane. This was a unsanctioned show because no one had the right papers to actually be working, but uh, A Wild Night, um, Amel and the Sniffers, Place to Bury Strangers, Pambara, Like to Get Close. Mm -hmm. Like to be very close, bird cloud. This is upstate New York, um, and uh, like a show to help. I think uh, I think it was just a new restaurant that was opening up in the in the backyard. They had a little a little show. Um, Fat white family. Mm -hmm. This is security guard at Future's back uh, Future show. This was not worth mentioning. <laughs> uh, this is a, a little small show um, at the Good Room, Tall Juan. My buddy David Byrne. <laughs> I forgot their name. Grim River, the Heaters. Um, so yeah, a lot of the the, the, the emerging kind of music uh, scene in in the last few years was dealing with a lot of closures and then other places reopening and finding a place for bands um, from across the country to play in, you know, like in front of 40 people, you know, um, Union Pool. Mm -hmm. These are all places that are suffering right now. And like, I don't, I don't even know what's gonna happen. It's crazy because none of these people are able to play. Um, I don't know. It's the makeup. So aftermath. Yeah. Some some rooftop. Nine inch nails on my birthday. How does your? Um, I mean, I know just proximity will will drive a lot of it, but how does your shooting differ um, by venue and, and, and kind of related, how has it changed over the past few years, do you think? I, now I, I, I'm, I'm trying to bring the, the smallest setup I can just to be a little bit more um, mobile and versatile. And also just cause I, that's, I just like that vibe. I like to be able to have something over my shoulder and just walk into any situation. So this was a like nine inch nails. Like I don't, I don't have a long lens. I don't like using long lenses to shoot anything. Um, and you know, there's, there's people who go, you know, if there's a set, if there's a soundboard shoot, uh, or front of house, um, that, then that's all that can happen. Like then I don't cover it. You know, I won't do it. And there's going to be people who do it really well. And I can talk to them or we can skip the show, but that's kind of the idea too, where especially if dealing with the fact that we're from Rolling Stone is that we don't really want to be in the back of the room. We want to be, first of all, we want to be backstage and certainly be as close to the music as possible. This is a situation where Nine Inch Nails had like a really restrictive contract that they needed everyone to sign. And I'm against that personally, but also, it's an, it's an, it clashes with the magazine's policy anyway, regarding work in general or work that I do or that anyone does for us. So if there's a, a contract, we ask them to waive it. If it can't be waived, we don't go. 
Can you can you give? I don't think a lot of people understand necessarily like what a restrictive contract. What what would not what would it look like and what would? Um, it, it would um, I forgot what Nine Inch Nails contract said, but generally the the contracts that we avoid signing, uh, the ones that are okay for us anyway, are the ones that suggest that you're representing you're shooting for the venue for the publication that you're saying that you're shooting for um and so the work doesn't show up anywhere else um and that's i think that's sort of fair <laughs> um but then there are other ones that um that suggest that you can't license uh you know after a certain period or or that the band owns the pictures that you've taken and you have to deliver high reses to them <laughs> Uh, within 24 hours or something and it's just like it's it's nuts I, I don't think I've ever really heard of anyone asking for them but then again I'm, we generally say no to these things so I don't know but it's just it's it's nuts if there's any any kind of stipulation that suggests that we can't kind of use the images that we've taken then it's a no which is you know it's sort of like knowing that it's going to be a no it makes it easy for me to negotiate <laughs> And in this case, they let me in at the last minute, which was like their their tour manager wasn't really uh, in on that and was furious. But you know, I shot it for the magazine. It ended up in the magazine, and you know, I I don't license these pictures and um, I'm showing it to you guys. You know, that's about it. <laughs> um, this is a band called Wolf Alice, and I always. I'm so I'm still really attracted to this picture and it's one of it's one of the things where they put on such an exciting show but the one thing I was couldn't stop obsessing over was this light behind them and I knew that once she goes off the stage she's going to walk right in front of it and illuminate kind of her from behind and kind of create this nice glow mm -hmm. and that's all I wanted <laughs> I was so happy once I got that and I um you know I shot them backstage and that that's what ran in the magazine but you know this is a but something that I felt really happy about getting. That, that dovetails with a question that just popped up from a student asking yeah. how you know you've gotten the shot at a concert. You know, sometimes you go look later and you find something that you, you missed, but uh, yeah, you always feel like it's usually some kind of very exaggerated penultimate moment that might occur or like a, like a jump. There's a, a band that I love shooting and it, the, the singer jumps a lot and if you get him in midair you feel like oh i got it but sometimes you know then the guitar next in front of his face and i like it's not always gonna be always great but you definitely are going through you're definitely feeling something um but i'm always looking for off things that are happening off to the side like these like couple of guys making out amongst broken glass because at like one of the craziest shows I've, I've been at, which is also literally pitch black. And another thing that I don't do very often is shoot a lot of flash. I, 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 I have, but uh, it's not something I'm really adept at, but uh, I always like, I'd rather push the ISO or go long exposure. And so this is a really ugly file, but like it's, I always kind of like this shot too. Um, you know, and I, there's literally two people watching this guy, <laughs> these guys, <laughs> um, and sort of always interested in sort of music that, uh, the music, the music appeals to me and, and the scene is really interesting and um, then I'll keep going back and, you know, sometimes it's, you're getting your ass kicked in with 150 people yeah. in the room and sometimes you're in the room with three people, you know, so. Um, so I've got another question, kind of got a few questions here, but yeah. um, <clears throat> what would you tell yourself now? Um, sorry, just, um, from, so what would you tell yourself that you know now from when you first started as an editor, um, kind of, if you could kind of advice to your earlier, younger self, I guess. You mean, you mean like, what would I tell myself at like the Newsweek me? <laughs> no, yeah, or just like, yeah, a younger version of, Hey Sasha, you know, 15 years ago, um, some advice that you were maybe fucking up on back then or just stupid about. Um, I, I used to be really nervous about um, approaching 
subjects and almost too dear, like if they were celebrities, you know, but they're, they're just regular people. They might have a lot of people in between you and them, you know, which are sometimes overprotective. And, but most, when you get in the same room with them, they're just, they're just down to like be normal. And so, uh, so it used to affect me quite a, quite a bit, but, um, I don't know if I would even tell myself that. I think I would probably tell myself to like put as much into like a 401k that like uh, I could <laughs> every, every paycheck, you know, I would uh, open up a Roth IRA. Um, but um, uh, cause you know, photographers don't make a lot of bank and let me tell you, photo editors don't either. Thanks for her. <laughs> so I, um, yeah. I don't love the idea that you know, this is an industry that's always been really fickle and based on what the economy, how the economy is, you know, like I've been really, really lucky. Um, but like I said, you know, I joined Rolling Stone when it was like eight people in the department and I was there. It was a luxury. I was working on one section, you know, and uh, to really specialize kind of the work that was going to be presented within. And, and then within a few years, like people are, they're cutting back and like I I been lucky enough to sort of be the you know one of the last people standing and mm -hmm. um, I think it's because not to suggest that anyone else has this issue but like I think I have a really good work ethic I, I, I like I'm not uh, uh, there's not a whole lot I would say no to like I've worked on covers I'll I work on the tiniest tiniest stories um, I'm doing a lot more for the website which is not something I've, I've ever been really trained I'm doing um and it's really not a big deal mm -hmm. uh especially with cms as it is these days and so you know like i'm uh i'm i'm there to get the job done you know and and i think it's like that's the attitude to have especially if you're going to work in in a in a magazine so uh that they like that to hang around to have people around that that are going to have that kind of opinion and of the of the of, of the work and and, and that kind of attitude, but, um, you know, um, it's kind of scary, especially with coronavirus, like, you know, we're still, I don't know, I feel very fortunate because we're still in the office. I mean, we're not in the office, but still working and putting out issues. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, knock on wood. But. Um, I have another question here. <clears throat> And I'm going to ask it, even though Renee, who asked it, should know this since she took my class last semester. Ouch. Um, for Mother, those, come on. <laughs> if you're hearing it from Sasha, you'll believe him instead of me. Um, how uh, for those who want to pursue a career in documentary or reportage type photography, um, how would you go about finding work and getting your work seen? Well. I think to start off, you probably just need to go, not to try and find like work that's going to be assigned to you. I would just go out and do a lot of, just go out and do it. And hopefully what will result is a visual style, a point of view, um, a knack for storytelling, uh, a shitload of contacts, um, some good reflexes. Um, that Those are the kinds of things that get recognized by, by editors. Um, sometimes, you know, uh, we're, we deal with photographers who you think they have all those qualities and then like something happens and like, oh, they didn't just kind of plow through and, and then always impressed by the ones that do. But, um, but yeah, I, I would just, I would, even if it's like, you're asking about music, uh, just, or anything else, just go local, you know, really just to, just examine the stories that are in your backyard and um, you're going to shoot a lot of crappy pictures at first and then they'll get better and better and you'll um, uh, and I think what the best thing to do is just even in general is just like be like wildly ruthless about the work that's in front of you and like like if it's not if it's not something you're happy with like just get rid of it um, and that way you're just putting out the, like the best stuff. Now this, this kind of comes up a lot too, where like everyone has, um, everyone has a camera on them, everyone. Um, and uh, you know, as many people as you, uh, as that are on Instagram or social media and they're just, they're posting images all the time. So like you, the, we're, we're very, 
we're very visual now, everyone. And so like just taking an okay picture is not enough. Not, not even um, for, for storytelling. I, I don't know, like Mark, I know Mark, you've been around a while. Like I think I'm a little, been around a little longer, like but back in the Newsweek days, there were some extraordinary photographers that we were working with. But then like they had like on the speed dial, some, some, some pretty ordinary dudes that I could never understand what the hell was going on. And I think it's obviously a little different back then where if you just had the hustle, like you can, you can get in front of people, but mm -hmm. um, it's not just the hustle anymore. You gotta like, you gotta deliver some beautiful work. Um, like, cause everyone's so good now. Like everyone's good. Everyone. I think one, one really important thing, which we kind of talked mm -hmm. about with Devin was kind of having a particular look to your work or voice in your work. For That's sure. Way. That's, uh, um, that could, I, I can imagine that kind of comment might, might be a little confusing or frustrating because that's not what makes Devin's work so good. No, <laughs> and that, he actually kind that, of chafed against it, but yeah, I think it's, it's you definitely recognize it, but like, you know, there's, you, there's other, um, you know, I, yeah, I, if you look at his work untreated, you know, raw out of the camera, you're going to still recognize it as his work, I think. Um, but I think definitely if you've got like a certain palette or a certain, and it's not even just like talking about black and white, there's a lot of color shifts you can do and like warmer colors is a guy named Victor Lorente who's got his tones are slightly warmer and you kind of recognize that and, and that's kind of his vibe. And it's, if it's not sort of altering the, you know, what's in the image, then go for it. I think it kind of comes down to a consistency in the in the work not just in the sure. toning but just like making consistently good images is mm -hmm. it goes a long way and like and like you were talking about at your job you know being willing to take on a challenge of a cover shoot but also being willing to shoot some small sh not necessarily shitty assignment but something not seeing something as beneath you necessarily particularly at the beginning yeah i mean and also like Historically, magazines were very territorial with photographers, and you know, you, a lot of photographers would have um, would have a contract. Um, Chris Anderson at New York Magazine, for instance, and uh, uh, Mark Seliger at Rolling Stone, and you know, and like you, that was one of the features of the magazine. You'd see work by this these photographers very regularly, um, and I, you know, I think that's that shifted a bit. Like that's that's true in some way, but you know, there's so many great, so much great talent and very diverse talent um, that it's just m much more exciting time and everyone's gotta get caught up in terms of, you know, getting, getting exposed to that work. Yeah. If you wouldn't mind me asking on that point and what you guys are talking about, hmm. is would you say in that regard that photojournalism uh, as a whole is, is, is a harder career in the world of photography to get into than others. I would, I would say so. I think only cause it's such it, on the, in some ways it's really accessible type of work. Cause you know, anyone with a, a basic, you know, digital camera um, and a, and a strong eye could, try and set up a shingle, you know, in their place, say like, I'm a photojournalist and like follow and work on some stories or go to protests and marches and create a pretty strong body of work, you know? Um, so yeah, there's a lot of competition is, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. There's a lot of numbers. And so having, being a lot smarter about, about the, the kind of places or the stories that you're working on uh, is as important as how, how good they look. Um, Timothy Archibald has a question here for you, Sasha. Um, who are your photographic influences who aren't specifically music photographers? Oh, well, I mean, I, um, what, someone who really recharged a really strong interest in um, photography for me was, um, and is Ken Schles. You know Ken? Oh, yeah. Ken's great. So, I love his work. Yeah, and so it's like, uh, and that, and he used to do work that's like nothing like his regular work um 
at for us at Newsweek and got exposed to the books he was doing, this, his personal projects. Um, he has a very famous book called Inf Invisible City, um, which I'm very proud to own an original copy, um, and uh, which was done in 82, I guess, um, when he was living in the Lower East Side when the Lower East Side was really gnarly. Uh, is he gonna go get his copy? <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so it's, um, and it's really gritty, black and white. Um, they've done a reprinting um, and rescanned a lot of that work and it's just extraordinary looking. And um, that book alone just like flipped me out. And it was just so, it, everything looks so simple. And it's just basically someone hanging out with his friends in an area where they live. In a, and it, it just happened to be a very specific time for that part of New York. Um, and it's beautiful. And it's not like, there's no celebrities in it. It's not like, you know, Lower East Side in the 80s, you get a lot of like punks and, you know, like CBGB stuff, like, you know, David Godless is that kind of stuff. But with Ken, it's just like, it's just people he knew, you know? Um, so, and he, his subsequent books are extraordinary. And like, I've had a lot of conversations with him about photography and it's just like his next level kind of way of thinking about photography to the point where I'm like, not even gonna try it, but. I mean, one of the things he even did was uh, like was doing photos like this, like the first time he got an iPhone, he was just fascinated with the fact that he had a camera that good and that could fit in his hand, you know, and he was taking pictures of his uh, then very young son um, and sort of like, like this beautiful light that just would like fall on his pillow when he was sleeping, that kind of thing. And, and you know, and they were kind of like the early iPhone kind of shitty, but they were still really beautiful. And he's, and I was like, well, you know, you could, uh, you could fix that by doing, he goes, no, 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 I'm not going to fix it. Like if this is like, if it's shot with a phone, it should look like it was shot with a phone and it didn't bug him at all. And it's full page in a book, you know, and I'm like, what the hell? Like, I didn't, even, you know, so Ken is like number one on my list. Um, there's also guys like Chris Anderson, I mentioned and, and Paolo Pellegrin and Alex Majoli, both those guys from actually all three of them with Magnum um, who, shoot a lot of black and white deliberately um and it was like everyone was trying to figure out like early digital days like you know like they i think there was a time when they got hooked up or paulo did with um with olympus which i had a an early olympus and it was you could shoot monochrome like uh, files directly <laughs> and so he's and his whole thing was like if you're gonna sh you can shoot black and white like you know you set it in monochrome so there'd be no color at all so yeah. just shooting film so you don't even have the choice later yeah uh, so like i'm like yes that is what i'm gonna do but now I'm like no 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 <laughs> i'm shooting raw <laughs> shooting raw <laughs> so but yeah it was just like a lot of interesting kind of ways of thinking about it as the technology changed and like what the intentions were and and um everyone was figuring it out at the same time had really strong ideas about it but um um so in the end, it's really kind of up to you. You do as you want. <laughs> That's interesting. It's a lot of the same influences I had. I'm kind of in that same group of people yeah. uh, used to shoot for Newsweek, probably when you were there, was Ilka Yeoman. Oh, shit. I mean, yes. <laughs> Another Magnum guy that just kind of dropped off the radar, but shot in the same kind of black and white, high contrast, yeah. kind of a lot of tilted horizons, um, great black and white. Yeah. But also really just like, trying to make very just sometimes ethereal kind of beautiful frames that might not have very much deep very many details in them um kind of photography yeah. that works to hit an emotional level as much as anything else i think you know yeah. it's drawing you in and kind of hitting you it's definitely photography that asks questions as much as giving you an answer to something. yeah 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 for sure um so my whole thing with, with this work really, it just became something that I could examine, you know, and it was something also that I in, enjoyed. And it's one of these situations that are, where there's such a strong connection with um, when you become close to these people. Um, and so you end up like becoming very friendly and following them around. And, you know, and it, there's a, a really interesting relationship that can occur where obviously when these are bands that are like setting up their next gig, they want to post an image, say Instagram, and you know, and they'll share your work. And then all of a sudden you're, the next band is following you. And 
you know, and you, and you check them out and we're like, Oh shit, these guys are amazing. So next time they come through and it's just like, it just builds and builds. And, um, this is the nude party. I have to, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that this was actually, this is actually in their album art. Um, and, um, that, that side kind of flash is, uh, was my wife taking a different picture, uh, <laughs> but sort of saved this, uh, this sort of setup for me <laughs> because that, that pop really makes a difference in this case. Um, yeah. This is like much earlier Black Keys where I could just hang out with their shitty equipment, um, very different to uh, what we could show earlier um, where they were playing the garden. Um, so you mentioned earlier you're doing a book. Tell us about your book. I am doing a book uh, with David Carroll's um, Peanut Press. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's always been very excited to to talk to photography about me and about my work, and um, I'm very complimentary. And it's um, uh, so yeah, that's it's, it's part of a series of small books with other photographers, all doing kind of uh, small books, and uh, which will come with like some very exclusive kind of prints, um, really fine printed work. And um, so yeah, I think is there's a holding pattern because of uh, Corona. Um, to I mean, to someone's point, like this is a this is actually at a festival at a uh, Coachella, hence the band Churches. It's not it's not really a band that I like. It was just sort of a band that I was assigned to do that 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 day, and certainly um, it's but it's a big band for the magazine, and so I have some more traditional images that I have of this band and submit sent in and were used, but. The, the the outfit she was wearing, and then sort of the the dust and light, uh, just sort of were creating other kind of things in my in my mind. And so this is this is the image that I took away from. It's not a bad thing to sort of go to a show and come up with like come out with twenty you know great suitable live pictures and display them that way. But that's more or less than I, I, I kind of try and avoid that myself is maybe just come away with like something very unique, kind of different. And that if, if that's the kind of thing you keep putting out, for instance, on social media, um, then it's your reputation be, becomes something else. I, I, um, I'm kind of surprised that people are even fans of my work. I'm kind of surprised that, uh, I think it's probably because of my age that, that people use the word legend because they think that if you're a certain age that you've been around long enough <laughs> that, that you get be called uh, get called legend. But like, I really haven't been shooting like live music as long as like say Mark has or or many of the people that I'm in the same room with. You know, um, it's just like when I worked at a for a, a, a short time, I worked for an information technology magazine. It's not the kind of thing I talk about because <laughs> um, the work wasn't that fascinating. It was dealing with a lot of corporate tech stuff and IT guys and CIOs. But like when I was there, I was shooting things like I was shooting server rooms and things and they were really interesting too. <laughs> like I really liked it, um, but it didn't end up being a, a set of work that I would be showing you today, you know, like yeah. not like broken glass. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a skate photo, sorry. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah, sorry. Find me asking. Was someone with a corporate tech, um, you know, kind of following background? How how did you get to where you are today from that? <laughs> I I honestly like there's a uh, an editor I used to work with at, at Newsweek, which was my first magazine job. Who his whole his whole thing was like, we're not here to say no. We're gonna say yes to everything. Like whatever needs to be, get done. I'm like, oh okay. Um, so that's kind of. You know, I, I do what needs to get done. And honestly, like every time I've interviewed at a job, you know, they say, oh, you take pictures. I say, yeah, like, well, you're not going to be shooting at this job. I'm like, yeah, I know. It's not a shooting position. But like, yeah, so just so you know. And then I get hired. And then, you know, and like within a couple of years, then I'm on, like on the regular kind of like, well, you go out and do this, you know, whether it's because budgets are low or because it's work that, that makes sense for me to be doing. Um, back in the back in the Newsweek days, if 
a photo editor would shoot anything at all, it would be quite scandalous. Um, back then it was considered really bad taste. Um, Cause that was work that then wasn't getting hired out, you know, it was a, a day rate taken away from the photographer. But that's, that's back then, you yeah. Um, so there's a question here. Um, you kind of touched on it, I think, but, um, and Pete, correct me if I'm wrong in this, but, um, so the question is, um, would you prefer a contact sheet of a moment or just the money shot? And I assume that's if you're submitting something for an assignment, Pete. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, if I assigned you to do what, like a, like a, like a, an evening of music? No, this is before like meaning I assume if I if we got hired by you, then you would want more than just one shot. You want like a series oh, yeah. of the moment. But I yeah, I mean introductory, I don't want to send you like six of my favorite of one shot. No, here's what like in early on, like if it's the first time we're working together, I'm gonna ask for a little bit more flexibility and maybe look at everything um before our, i i know what kind of editor you are of your own work um but mm. generally speaking if it's someone that we've you know the first time it hit me like peter yang who's, who's just phenomenal is working for for rolling stone and um he sent me like three photos <laughs> from an assignment and i was like what the fuck? <laughs> but uh but with would you what you come to learn is like, yeah, those are the three photos. Those are like, those are definitely the ones. And um, uh, so, yeah, there's, you get to a point with certain people or, you know, I appreciate sort of a, a slightly wide edit or a wider edit. Um, uh, I would certainly in any, any one of you who are on assignment for anything and are going to submit something, I would definitely call out what your favorites are in a separate folder. Um, so, hey, by the way, these are my favorites. Here's the rest, you know, um, because uh, that, that will mean something possibly. Um, but, um, you know, but I wouldn't send, um, I think generally speaking though, if you've got some like pictures that are just really, you know, just not great, I, um, you, you know, don't send them in. They're, they're, they're gonna, A, they're gonna maybe color the photo editor's opinion of you or be they're gonna they're gonna end up being used and you're <laughs> and you're not gonna like that <laughs> mm -hmm. um but um yeah um yeah i think when you get like there's a relationship that needs to kind of happen over some time and uh you know there might be some back and forth where you know you're gonna send in your like an edit and photo editor is going to ask you for more depending on on maybe something's not working uh you know and you know that that's that's sort of like you're you're both learning about each other at that point um Thank you. yeah it's more directed towards the introdu introducing oneself to you in the first place yeah i mean there's like there's photographers now i work regularly it's gonna they're gonna send in a really tight edit they're gonna tell me which ones their favorites are um or even like here's folder a and there's only like a few there's a thing and then and folder b and folder c and um and so yeah but i mean if you're just submitting like uh, uh as you if you're submitting like work just to say hello um i mean i would just go with the strongest image it's like, you know just if it's a, like a promo kind of email mm. and you're announcing yourself i wouldn't send a range of the same thing at all um, and there's a lot of people who are, you know, they're just, you could tell that they're, they're sort of new and they're starting out and they're shooting their friends. Like they're saying these really, really cool portraits and they're, they are really cool portraits. But then if it's like the same person keeps popping up every, every few images and I realize like they, they really haven't done that much and you kind of want to see that they, they've grown past like shooting the, the, their three friends. Um, so keep that in mind too. You. you know, you don't want to repeat too much in terms of that. Thank you. Sure. <clears throat> That's a really good piece of advice, particularly if you're shooting portraits, because you most often will be shooting portraits, is having a kind of um, um, diverse range of portraiture. Yeah. If, I have, if I have an assignment of 
um, you know, an old African American woman who lives in the Central Valley, and all I see are like young, hip white kids in your portfolio. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to necessarily trust you to make that assignment happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes before like a really big assignment, you know, and they're the person might be new, might certainly if they haven't already come in for a visit. Um, obviously once we're able to meet in person um, just to really talk about it, something in person, talk about it in person rather than on the phone uh, if that's possible. Uh, Cause in, it's, you know, we're, it's not just the work that you do. It's, you know, it's, it's your personality. It's the way you compose yourself. It's the way you are in a room, you know, all that matters. So there's a kind of a specific question here, Sasha, um, kind of boiling it down. Um, do you pick up images submitted by photographers that you don't have a relationship with? Um, say somebody shot somebody and was like, hey, I have these pictures. Would you pick those up? Yeah. Or um, kind of, and then kind of more specifically, uh, how does somebody break through and get noticed? Um, is it worth submitting pictures to the magazine to develop the relationship or is there a better way? I mean, I would, if you're, I would certainly send like promos, promo emails, like that makes sense for the place that you're sending them to, you know? Um, and I wouldn't do it every week. I would maybe do it, you know, not even once a month, but every once in a while. Um, uh, yeah, I just, I can give you an example. One second. <laughs> I think I have this here. Uh, let's see. What's the latest issue? Uh, this is a. Oh, hold on. Stop share. All right. So this photo, like we did a like a whole climate issue. This is Greta Thunberg. The we did the shoot that you saw inside. It's like a ship, Shepherd Ferry. Uh, illustration on the cover. Um, it is nonstop, like climate stories with politics. AOC. Uh, Jane. We photographed Jane Fonda for this, um, and it's like thirty pages of different climate-related stories. And just so happens that I got a promo in my email from a photographer named Brian Thomas. He spoke to our class. Oh, he did? Oh, okay. So here, here we go. He sent me a promo. He sent me a promo with like, I think one image. I don't, you know what? Maybe, maybe I saw it somewhere else. I, I really don't remember because I, I reached out because it's, um, this is a, it's the, it's a climate, uh, the, the global climate strike, strike from last year, which is sort of very relevant to the, to the issue we were working on. Like straight up, like, this this is like a full page in the magazine. It's a really cool. Shows that in class. Yeah. Oh, so there you go. So yeah, that's how it happens. Because uh, uh, it's a beautiful image, and so that's what my job's supposed to be—is to sort of look for that kind of thing. Now there there were hundreds of people at that climate march. Um, a lot of them shooting very traditional kind of wire style, which is very useful, very informative. It's even very attractive, but um, Brian was going for a different kind of vibe. And um, yeah, and so it, I immediately noticed it. It's, it was immediately per like, it's per it was perfect. So it was like the easiest thing that I've ever had to, <laughs> had to do is like put this in front of like my, the art director. I said like, just put that on that page. Like, and we're, <laughs> we're done and we're done. And, we, and the thing is like, it was not a, it's not shot on assignment. But I, I licensed it from him directly, just for space rate, you know. So. That's encouraging because, you know, the classic horizontal 35 millimeter editorial shot is great. And, but I, I see like vertically quite a bit. <laughs> so to have the vertical shot be seen in the magazine is great as well. Well, we have a lot of single page, um, let's see, like, spaces too so it's actually more than we usually have like even the next page is um i don't know if anyone likes paramore you know that's uh what's her name i hate that band so much i can't even tell you um so 
Jerry Lee Lewis, we photographed. Like Jerry Lee Lewis is like 80 something years old and uh, was in the recording studio. It was one of those things where we found out like half hour before where he was gonna let someone in. It was only gonna be Rolling Stone. And um, I had to come, um, I had to find someone within a few minutes. Um, Amy Lombard shot some kids. There were, she's did, great. She, did she speak to your class too? No, but she's uh, great. Yeah, so she's, um, so this was a story about kids, um, a generation of kids, uh, super anxious about the economy, uh, not the economy, but the climate anxiety, uh, how, it's, how it's affecting kids. Now, like a lot of these, a couple of kids were like, were, were in New York, so she shot this kid too. Now this is a full page vertical. Um, I think that was shot vertically too. So she mixed it up, you know. Um, and the thing is like, there's a lot of people who would have done great portraits of, of those kids. Um, but I thought of Amy because, not just because her pictures are great, but I think personality wise, like would have immediately made them comfortable. She's, um, she's, she's not overly, yet. she's a young, young woman. And like, I've been on a, like panels with her and she's really funny and like kind of bubbly. And so I, I felt like a lot of energy for sure. Yeah. So it was totally going to be keyed in with like these kids. Um, but then more importantly, it was going to nail it, nail the pictures. So any other coincidences we can <laughs> come up with? <laughs> Did you by chance work with Ken Schles on the climate stuff at all? No, and I know he he's constantly out, and I I, I I've seen him at protests too, and I and I sometimes like on the opposite side of the whatever, I'm like I want to go and talk to him, but um, um, no, I'm fascinated by that work, and I, I was thinking about it because I think he he I, I don't know what he's shooting with, um, but I. It, Yes, it's 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 something that's come up, but we'll see. I, I I've seen it only on his Instagram feed, but yeah. We we ran something of his from one of those. And it was. Oh okay. yeah. Um, anybody else have questions for Sasha? We're hitting almost two hours, which is awesome. I yeah. actually have a question for him. Yeah, sure. let it rip. So Just, he does a lot of music photography. Just so you know. Oh, yeah, cool. the, I did concert photography. The last show I shot was early March now and mm -hmm. I just wanted to get your opinion on if you've seen the drive-in shows they're doing in Denmark yeah I saw that kind of like what you think the future of uh, music photography is going to look like after this I mean like I hope it's not that I think the yeah. those images were really interesting just because it looked so weird but that's uh I think that's gonna do a disservice to the whole idea of what it means to get together and listen to music um, and so, yeah, I don't, um, I don't, I won't, I don't, I, I'm sure we'll probably, if it's, if that's what it is, I'm sure I'll be covering it for a while, but it, it'll just sort of be really weird and odd, you know? Um, th did they try that here yet? Um, not that I've seen of, uh, I don't, the reports that I've seen just from about us of just like waiting till like fall of 21 to get shows back. Which I mean, I'm hoping I, not. Just, just cause I'm like, I'm getting older, you know, uh, I, I don't always, I used to, I don't always mind that there's a photo pit that I could be in. And, um, but I just don't, I, I preferred if, if it was a band that I knew and that way I could stay in there the whole show. Um, but the, uh, and that way kind of capture a fuller vibe or certainly backstage, but the, um, the, the, the real fun shows are, you know, when you're, you have to get there like crazy early and to be in the front and you've got someone's elbow in your back or, you know, the whole, the whole show. And, um, the, uh, just this last year, like I actually got a concussion, um, at a show cause someone dived. It's I mean, the stage was like two feet high, but like, so dove right into my face, um, and like cleaned me out. Like, uh, there was blood everywhere. I couldn't like, I, like, I, I was super dizzy and so we had like mild concussion. Um, um, so I prefer that to a drive-in, a drive-in scenario. <laughs> that's, that's my only way of putting it. Cause that's like, you're, you're, you want to, you want to be close to people. Mm -hmm. um, 
I mean, there's something very, like I like kind of hinted at before, like kind of like, I'm very shy ar around a lot of people, but when you're all keyed into this kind of moment, like it kind of goes away, especially if I'm shooting, but you know. Yeah, that's why I like love shooting EDM shows, just because of the energy that the fans and people give off. Oh yeah, for sure. Anything else for Sasha? Anything else? Okay. We'll let um, you Sasha. I'll just say one other thing is like, yeah. um, it's pro you probably are mention this all the time, but like, and you do this on the regular, obviously you're after this, you're gonna look at each other's work, but like, that's what you should be doing always. Um, even some really well-respected, accomplished photographers, they're always showing their stuff to people that they <clears throat> that they trust. They're, or I um, should never stop doing that. I think certainly Instagram or something like that, which kind of creates a certain amount of likes, um, isn't quite the same thing. Um, but the uh, but a real critical, like a, a real critical eye at your work is the only thing that's going to really make you improve. Because if you've got like friends say like, yeah, that's awesome, you know, you're just you're never going to really, really, really. It's I think it, there's it's uh, it's the hardest thing is to sort of, is to learn and sort of alter your your reflexes or the way you might approach something, um, and a lot of it is 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 that and and maybe not not always just looking at photography but doing all other kinds of work too and you know like reading a book or you know um, some of the the reasons why, for instance, like Natalie Kisar's um, Venezuela piece was so important is because she's so knowledgeable about the area. Um, and that's what she's bringing to like the smallest kind of neighborhood and story. So she knows like every external factor that's kind of pushing on all these people. It, and it's, it's more than just like, it's not poverty porn at that point. You know what I mean? It's not like, Oh, these people on water, they got to go down to like this hose that's all the way down and they got to climb it back up. Like, the, the whole system that, that that's uh, in, that's created that environment like she knows what that is so and, and knowing that is going to make a difference in the way that you might approach a story like that yeah I'm just using that one as an example but like yeah yeah, yeah I mean both of those, those are like so critical like having somebody who you can trust because a lot of times they will see something in your work that you might be missing or that's just not obvious to you. And that's so, so important. Yeah. And like, who knows, like if it wasn't for that, like there's no way they would let her in, like let someone into their homes. You know, it's, uh, you know, the little kid in that photo, which they're, um, who's in charge of like connecting all the hoses and all the, you know, they were like, was like her little bodyguard, like that, that, that trip. And like, he was like looking after her. It was like, he, he knew that she was, she was okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any last questions? Okay. Thank you, Sasha. That was fucking awesome. Really Anytime, appreciate man. taking the time. It's good to see a You're bunch like, of my, my favorite photographers right there in the in the corner. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks. So um yeah, it was nice to talk to you. Um and uh, Kimberly, I'm very confused by the fact that you have a still photo. <laughs> <at your>, uh... <laughs> That's funny. But uh, yeah, because every time I'm like, oh, she thinks it's funny. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, but any uh, anytime. And uh, uh, Mark's got my contact info. If you want to, if you want to reach out for a question uh, that you thought of later, um, please forgive that any delay in getting back. It's uh, as I described. It's something I'm working on. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Hey, that was awesome. So awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Totally great, Sasha. Awesome. Really awesome. Thank you. And Timothy, thank you for for your compliments and your support. Always. Always. Thank you. <laughs>